there's already a line, so I'll just keep that line and then, as far as I can remember it. Namaskar. Namaskar. Thank you very much. I'm very full and very grateful. The question I have today is a very material one, like in the body. As I am approaching the so-called pre-menopause and menopause period of a woman's life, and I've I've had the experience from my friends that they've been through or are going through and it's not very pleasant. They are suffering a lot from their hormones being upside down and everything. Some of them with depression also. So I was wondering, is there a connection between surrendering this state of being with Surrender to that as well, what is happening, this transformation that is happening to the body itself. The process is actually one of taking on a slim identity because you have to take on some identity that actually moves into that state or posture of, of surrender. What happens is that you are actually in every moment consciously with awareness, discerning between the, the, the impulse, the almost imperceptible impulse of the soul and the loud, demanding, clamoring, insisting, pushing, yearning, you know, opinionating voice of the, of the ego. That is your actual sadhana or practice. As you tune in more and more to the soul, this entire system is bending in surrender. It is not simply the conceptual, oh, I'm in surrender. It's not simply the emotional tears falling as it experiences the devotion to the soul. It is the entire system, the very materiality of the system is moving into a state of surrender until the identity falls away, even the act of surrender falls away, it's just this is simply an instrument, it's just from moment to moment to moment to moment, it's an action, it's an action, it's an action, it's doing what it has to do, impulsed by the soul and whenever the ego tries something, it moves into a state of vigilance and again moves back into that. If the very materiality of your system, which carries all the other, the other layers of ability to perceive consciousness, is in surrender, it is able to bend to the various requirements of the system in its various stages of life. So, if you are in that state of surrender, the more you go into that state, the less you'll even know what is menopause and what is happening, because there won't be those wild changes up and down. In fact, youth is maintained on a level which is beyond something that can be imagined unless you actually undertake this process. Everything from... In fact, we just had this recently. It's not a menopausal woman, it's a young woman, but she was in front of everyone. She had that experience where she finally settled down into a body after three or four years of, of sadhana, I think three years now, and it, it made like a plop. And then you're settled inside this very materiality of the system and instantly the entire, her entire skin and her, everything started to change and it's not stopped changing. And I've seen this in others, not only women, but men as well. So, we are talking here about an entire system which is operating largely out of ego, which is why you have what you call menopause at all. It should be such a smooth transition that you don't really know what's going on. Take my grandmother. So, she lost her husband when she was very young. Her 
six children were born and then she lost her husband and then in those days women this is very long ago they once they were widows in india they didn't have much of a life so basically what they did is that they because they had no other choice they moved into this state of surrender because they had no other choice they were cut off on all levels they couldn't actually allow the ego to to determine much that's a very horrible a horrible way to live but what was observed and what i myself observed is that she just never aged i mean she looked her skin was like a like a 40 year old when she was 75 you know so then i thought about this and i wondered if if that has a connection that if one is in surrender in the freedom of doing whatever one wants to do could it be then that it also impacts your physicality or it impacts for example the the menopausal symptoms and actually it does it just impacts it in such a strong way that it's irrefutable and you don't have to believe me you can do it and then you'll see that your your story will be different from that of the women you know and by the way this applies to men because men also have menopause it just is shown differently but they have physical symptoms and changes in their bodies and everything which is maybe less known but they have pretty much the same thing so it impacts men's bodies also the more you are in surrender to the source technically the less you should have the male age related issues that you would have you said i'm coming with a material question all spirit is matter all spirit is matter all spirit is matter there is no difference between the two they're just different kinds of matter more subtle and less subtle but all spirit is matter being spaced out and mooned out is not spirituality you see that a lot increasingly that the idea of spirituality is connected with the idea of of escape and detachment it is not like that spirituality is being able to to deal with matter in the most conscious way possible that's what spirituality is it's about this it's not about that it's not about that it's about this because if you say i am that then what about this then why is this here then you may as well get rid of this then you can be that you can fly around as a soul as a supreme soul you can merge with it anyway then why this body in the first place we make the very materiality of the system more conscious of itself and when it's undertaken through surrender there's no other way around surrender you have to bend down even if you take 6 years of neo advaitin conceptual queries into who you are and you identify with supreme soul and even attain enlightenment at one point you're going to have to make that way down into this everyone did the greatest of spiritual masters from ramana maharshi himself to ramkrishna parmansa to shri aurobindo to ananda mahima and others and others in the west as well they all have to make their way down they have to inhabit this this is where the whole action is of a spiritual seeker and what that action is is the surrender to the master this surrendering to that here not there when you do that then the body is coherent it's it's contoured it's present it's aware of itself and obviously it will move smoother into the transitions then than if you're not connected with it if there's no awareness in the system how is it supposed to transit even even transiting into the next phase after the body is dropped even that transition is physical in nature at the beginning of the death process how are you supposed to to undertake that if you are not present 
So that is the key for sure. And it makes sense because if you're here and if, you, if the cells are more and more and more in an expanding consciousness, aware of themselves, then obviously they'll bend more. They'll be more in surrender to the transitions. The more they bend, the less pain in the system. And same applies for illness. For? Illness. Of course. The more conscious the cells of the body are, the more they are able to defend themselves against the attacks. Illness is an attack on the system. And why would you not want this to be aware of itself? It was a journey into the cosmos that was undertaken a, a few thousand years ago in the Upanishadic and post-Upanishadic periods all around the world actually, where you know, there was this attempt to, to experience the cosmos, which is why the enlightenment processes were undertaken. Now that entire thing has been mapped. We know what happens up there. We know that when you, when you move into deep states of meditation and you move into transcendental experience, that the that there is a dissolution of identity. At first there is, a, you know, the contourlessness of the body and then there is simply the perceiving entity and then at one point what one can call nothingness, which one only knows of because one then returns into being a perceiving identity and gently, gradually sinks back into the body one knows what's happening out there, all the samadhi states, what is enlightenment, what happens and so on. And one has hundreds if not thousands of enlightened beings who, who say, now I know what enlightenment is, now I would like to come back and just be here. We've had them sitting in this sabha, we've had spiritual masters coming to me and saying, okay, now we know what enlightenment, now how to be back here. They've asked it in the sabhas, they've asked come for private meetings, how to resolve this now. So we know what's out there. And what we know is that when you go out there, you have to come back and... So then how to handle this? If I am that, then what happens to this? Then am I this when I get back? Or how do I deal with that? So I am here, I am this here, and I am in surrender to that. And that is the posture which will result in the non-dual experience of this, of thisness. Which of course means that when it's about illness, when it's about menopause, when it's about anything the body is doing, it's certainly going to be better off if you're here than if you're not here. If you're, if you're in your home, there's less chance that thieves will enter. Thank you for your clarity. Master. There was that lady and then after her you and then you.